Hi, my name's Granger Morgan. I'm a professor in the Department of Engineering and Public Policy at Carnegie Mellon. I also have appointments in the Departments of Electrical and Computer Engineering and in the H. John Hines School of Public Policy and Management. I spent much of my academic career here at Carnegie Mellon building the Department of uh, Engineering and Public Policy and I'm delighted that uh, though I'm still a very active faculty member that uh, I've now been replaced by Doug Sicker who is the uh, department head in EPP. The answer depends a little bit on whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate student. If you're an undergraduate, increasingly virtually everything that engineering does touches on the broader society. And we offer double major degrees with all the traditional engineering departments not to replace engineering, in fact you get a perfectly conventional engineering degree, but we add a set of additional dimensions and skills so that when you bump into these other broader questions you have some idea about how to think about them and how to address them. At the graduate level we run a doctoral program which takes people with science and technology backgrounds and prepares them for careers working on policy problems in which the technical details are really essential. Now, not all policy problems are like that, but there is a subset where if you don't get the science and the technology correct, you're likely to do dumb or silly things. We run a master's program, a one-year master's program that starts in January and ends in December called the Engineering and Technology Innovation Management Program. This is for engineering students who want to develop some management skills in technology and innovation. It's unusual because of the timing and the timing is that way in order to have a summer internship in the middle uh, of the program. Maybe some engineers don't need to know much about it. They just want to sort of keep their head down and solve technical problems. But increasingly in today's world, the interactions and the interconnections between technology and the broader society are more and more important. And in order to shape those interactions and inform the policy process so that policymakers don't go off and do dumb and silly things, we need engineers and scientists who understand enough about public policy to be able to contribute to an informed public discourse on important issues in the policy realm where the technical details matter. Over the years I've taught a variety of courses in engineering and public policy including the undergraduate project courses which address some real-world policy problem with a class made up of both uh, undergraduate EPP students and social science students. Then I have developed and for many years taught a course called Theory and Methods of Policy Analysis. This is the core course in our graduate program. It's not a tools course. It covers a wide variety of topics but it's basically designed to help the student develop their own critical thinking and perspectives on the tools of policy analysis. We have other courses that make you uh, proficient in actually applying uh, those tools. I also teach a workshop course designed to help students develop skills in uh, uh, solving unstructured problems. And this of course is important in its own right, but it's also important because the qualifying exam in EPP consists of two parts. The first half is a serious piece of research, a research paper which students present and defend. But then the second half is a big messy unstructured policy problem and when we first started doing these years ago, we would have students who would have straight A's but come in and have difficulty with this. The course that I teach uh, is basically designed to help students get to the point that they understand some of the strategies that can be used to structure and solve messy unstructured policy problems. Since we've been doing this course, the mean performance in our qualifying exams has gone way up and the variance has come way down and so it does seem to be that you can actually teach people some of the basic ideas for how to structure unstructured problems.